This is the video report for Lab 4 entitled Animal Behavior 2, Territorial and Sexual Behavior. I'm Dan Brandon. And I'm John Fitzgibbon. The two primary objectives of this animal behavior lab were to observe the behavioral response of the territorial male crickets when coming in contact with novel male and female crickets and to determine which environments or substrates crickets prefer to live in. The specimen studied in this lab was the house cricket, genus Acatus and species Domesticus. One major benefit of using these crickets is their sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism is when two different sexes of the same species have, different, have differences in form that allow them to be easily distinguished. In the case of this species of crickets, the females have long ovipositors extending from the bottom of their abdomens while the males have special apparatuses in their wings that allow them to make song. These unique appendages may be seen in the figures, the female is shown in figure C and the male in figure D. Male crickets are very territorial. Once a territory has been established, they will defend it aggressively against the other males who come into the area. This aggressive behavior is heightened when there is also a female present. Cricket aggression has been characterized generally into five different levels, with level 1 being the lowest and level 5 being the highest. This categorization of behavior may be seen in the table, which also lists several forms of behavior patterns for territorial males with females present. The methods used were presented in the lab manual for this experiment, which was posted on MyWPI. No deviations were made from the original lab procedure. The materials were provided by the Worcester Polytechnic Institute Department of Biology. They included the crickets needed for each experiment, as well as cages and the specific environments created in each. In this lab, there were two primary experiments run. The first examined cricket territorial behavior and the second dealt with the environmental preferences of crickets. The cage for the territorial and sexual behavior trials may be seen on the left. On the bottom of the cage in this experiment were oats, a piece of dried out apple, a saucer of water, and a segment of an egg carton. On the right is the cage for the environmental trials, which consisted of quadrants of soil, sand, rocks, and cage bottom. Below are the four timers that were used simultaneously in the environmental trials. In the first experiment, a male cricket was placed into a cage that was already occupied by a cricket that had previously been allowed to establish its territory. Two caged males were used in order to run the experiment twice. Soon after this, a female cricket was also added. Behavior after each addition was observed to detect patterns. On the whole, no real aggressive behavioral patterns were discerned, with the crickets spending very little time interacting with each other overall male or female. The second experiment was involved the second experiment involved determining the environmental preference of crickets. Here an arena was set up and divided into quadrants. In each quadrant a different substrate was placed. The cricket was then placed into the box and was timed as to how long it spent in each region or substrate. This experiment demonstrated fairly conclusively that soil is the preferred substrate of the crickets, with the total time spent in the soil being far greater than that of any other substrate. The first experiment run in lab involved observing cricket behavioral patterns. A male cricket was allowed to establish his territory in a cage, after which male and female crickets were introduced to the cage to view ensuing action. It was expected that the territorial male would defend against the newly introduced male and would heighten this conduct in the presence of the female. However, the experiment results were mostly different than expected. The first trial of experiment one shows some significant error as little activity or interaction was shown despite the addition of more crickets. Unfortunately, the egg carton was left in the cage in case the original cricket had established the carton as its territory. 
This attempt to not disrupt the territory ended up backfiring because all the crickets climbed up into their own compartment of the carton and did not realize that other crickets were present up there. This is pictured on the left. Though there were few interactions overall, there were certainly more that took place than a female when a female, female was introduced. At the onset when there were only two males, the crickets seemed to simply ignore each other. However, once the female was brought in, the resident cricket seemed to follow it around a bit, perhaps trying to ward off the introduced males. We only witnessed one instance of fighting between males, lasting for a very brief period of time, and it hardly seemed to come to a resolute end. The fact that the male crickets made just about no songs throughout the trials seemed to further indicate that the crickets had little interest in any interactions with each other. The second experiment dealt with cricket environmental preferences. Each subject was placed into a cage with different substrates lining the floor and observed to see where they spent the most time. It was anticipated that the crickets, generally known to prefer dry, dark environments, would spend the most time in the sand substrate. Breaking down the data to males versus females, the graph shows preferences by sex. In each test, three different crickets of each sex were placed into the cage and timed. The graph shows that females have a much stronger preference than the males do for the soil substrate. Though the male data still shows that the subject spent the most time in the soil, the time is much closer to the other substrates than it is for the females. From the total class data, it appears as though crickets prefer soil above all other substrates. The bottom three choices had times relatively close to each other, though crickets spent only about half the time in sand, the second most used substrate as they did in the soil. This may be seen in the graph of substrate versus time. An ANOVA was run on each set of data to determine if there truly was a difference in preference between substrates. The female ANOVA resulted in a p-value of 0 .0099, and the male set had a p-value of 0 .226. This resulted in rejection of the null hypothesis for the females, but acceptance for the males. From this, it may be assumed that males do not have a clear preference in substrates, and that any partiality shown for one over the other is due to chance. Females, on the other hand, do have a preference for soil above the others, as the p-value tells that there is only a 0.99% chance that the variance is due to error. Running an analysis of variance, or ANOVA, for the data as a whole, resulted in a p-value of 0 0.0084, which indicates that there is only a 0.084% chance that the results were due to chance. Thus, the null hypothesis is rejected and the alternative hypothesis is accepted, as the crickets do indeed favor soil.